All right, ladies and gents, welcome to not low elo legends. These guys are a 1050 elo. They have actually surpassed low elo legend. They have they are now a mid elo maniac, I guess you could say. Oh, uh, we've got Truth Bandicoot, who has 1,200 games played, playing as the Teutons on a map that was just introduced to the pool called Wade. And then here in the red, we have Heretic Prophet, who has 2,300 games played. So what that tells you is you only need to get to 1,000 ranked games to get above 1,000 ELO, all you low ELO legends out there. That's not necessarily true. I'm lying, okay? That's a joke. But uh, yeah, both these players experience. They both went Teutons. So I didn't look at their profiles to see if they play Teutons all the time, but I know Teutons is a good sieve for, for beginners. Um, a sieve without a lot of weaknesses, let's put it that way. I think the way to exploit the weaknesses of Teutons, you have to play a very specific way and normally with something like Cav Archers in the mid-game, and that's not too common. But yeah, we have the good luck, have fun here from Red. I like to see that. We'll see if Blue responds. And the idea here is to obviously cast, but also coach. Um, and I don't do mid-elo too frequently because, um, you know, it, it doesn't have quite as much mystery as low elo does, right? The red says mirror, question mark. He's wondering why the opponent has Teutons as well. Now, we just talked about this here on stream, but other people might not have heard it. So, Wade is a map that was actually used for uh, Empire Wars. Empire Wars, a feudal age game mode. And in Empire Wars, you would start with a mill already out here with a bunch of ills. But since it's a standard age of empires, players are going to have to scout that and use that. Because you do not have berries near your TC. You do have two elephants. Uh, normally, one near your TC and then one out towards the mid. Uh, there's actually more than that if you want to take them. But I'm thinking through what people would do with Teutons. Because Red's wondering if this person picked Teutons. Or if he went Mirror. But Blue says, no, I picked Civ. So we've got two players who love the Teutons. Teutons. Now, I don't think they're going to marry each other. I could be wrong. But I don't think that Heretic Prophet would be interested in uh, Truth Bandicoot. <laughs> Yeah, the other thing to mention is there's a lot of gold here in the middle. Uh, you've got three things of gold at your base, which is actually quite a bit. So you've got quite a bit of gold there. And then you eventually will need to fight for this. Also, someone asked if you can dock. Um, I don't... I, I thought about it. I don't actually think you can dock on this map. I think this rocky terrain is to prevent that. So I take back what I had said earlier in the day. But already, guys, if you think of the 800 ELO players, the 700 ELO players we cast in Low ELO Legends a lot, already we are seeing that these players are are better off with the villager production. You've got 6 seconds of TC idle time versus 9 seconds. Also, I, I've seen the timings on the houses be good. And they both got 5 on wood, which is fascinating. And now Red choosing to get Loom. The only logical explanation for Loom would be that Red wants to run way out here to get another elephant. That's my guess, anyways. Blue scouts this. I like it. Good scouting, and we'll place a mill. Now, these guys play a lot, so maybe they played in the last two days, and they've already seen Wade. But also, their scouting seems really strong as well. So overall, it's just... But their scouting seems slightly better. Their Dark Age execution overall seems slightly better. And some of the other lails we see. And here comes Red. And Red is going way over here to place a mill on the other side. Now, I think... I mean, you could make arguments for sending this many vills. It's not necessarily awful. But I think what's probably best is to still bring in an elephant underneath your TC. Or at least take your water buffaloes. Like, that's... There's four buffaloes there. Look at Blue. He's taking his buffaloes. And then, like... 30 seconds, I'm going to check how much food has been brought in, and I bet you that Blue has brought in a whole lot more because he's focused on that. Yeah, look at this. Now Blue's getting Loom. Blue's actually trying to up the Feudal Age here. And I think Blue is actually going to snag this elephant. Okay, never mind. I was wrong. Uh, Lucas says, in my experience, 1,000 plus ELO knows control groups, unit counters, and hotkeys for more common units and buildings. They still overreact, underreact a lot, struggle with multitasking when fighting is happening. They also quit way earlier. Gotcha. Red just lost his scout to the enemy TC. I know that happens a lot at all ELOs. Just rip right into the TC. 
Should have maybe done a little better job there. And this kind of feels like this is going to be a stomp. Like, if blue goes for a solid scout rush here, which is, I think, what you would see at 1,000 elo, right? I feel like that's a build order that's common. What on earth is red going to do? Okay, here comes the elephant underneath the TC. Great job from blue. Just overall better execution. Though I think, if anything, he's got too much on food if he wants to go scouts. He's going to need more wood income for his buildings. All right. Let me look. Eco. Yeah, he's bought 500 more food. Now, you've got more wood for, for red, which is fine. Um, but I just would have liked to have seen him keep villagers underneath his TC for a bit longer. Okay. We do have the barracks, though, for red. At this point, you should feel a sense of urgency. Your opponent's in feudal. You should say, yep, we need to do that, too. Drop off the food. Click up to Feudal Age. 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 Click up to Feudal Age! Okay, he added one more vill and then he clicked Feudal Age. Wow, that was a... I think he's scared of scouts, so he was trying to add the walls here. Protect his vills. Uh, he's got to be careful, though. He might over chop that one. Over here, as expected. You've got blue making the stable. So in mirror matchups, it honestly just comes down to execution, right? There's no Civ win anymore. There's no, oh, I can't counter this, or a lot of those time windows are kind of gone where you think this Civ's better in this age, this situation. It just comes down purely to execution. And uh, blue forgot to make houses. You can definitely see where they're starting to fall apart a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, there's so many different things you have to do in Age of Empires 2, and it's complicated to stay with it. So, had Blue not been housed, had Blue maybe thought ahead with the wood, Blue would have maybe had the scouts out earlier. It feels like this is actually manageable for Red, if Red is able to get two or three spearmen out. Um, he actually, he realized he was exposed here, and so he left. Oh boy, I'm not sure I like this. Now he's going to make militia. If you want to go man-at-arms, you need to have more gold timing as well man at arms is an early feudal thing if your opponent's been in feudal age guys for two minutes and you think they're going scouts you think they're going to be aggressive pretty much any form of feudal age aggression is going to deal with man at arms now look at blue blue's got a scout over here good job scout attacking the wall villager that should be a dead vill i'm going to call it right now red's going to resign he's, he's going to resign in just like a second or two i think he knows enough to realize that this has not been a great game for him I think he's just going to be like, you know what? Screw it. I'm out of here. I, I could be wrong. But if blue continues this, I think red's going to get flustered. Okay. Here comes two scouts. And no spearmen yet for red. Feels like that would be an obvious move when you're getting attacked. More scouts coming in. Okay. That hurts. He's obviously up against it now. He's like, I gotta do damage. There's nothing here for blue anymore, so he can't find any damage. I would like to see blue keep his scouts together. You know, group them together. And at home for blue, this is pretty good. He's on gold now, so I'm assuming he's gonna add an archery range. Um, he might not, though. He's added a lot of farms. He has his wood, and he has his farm upgrade. And he's just content to not allow red to do anything here. And Bandy's playing well. But it all stems back to his Dark Age. His Dark Age was a lot cleaner. Oh, yeah. Maybe Red did lose a villager to a boar. Because it looks like he has three losses and Blue only killed two. But I think one of the best strats you can go for, all the way up to, like, maybe 1,300 elo, is Scouts in the Knights. You go Scouts, just like this. You focus on your wood and your farm upgrade. You add a bunch of farms. And then you wall up behind it, and you just continue to pressure. I would I would like to see him maybe work a bit more on, on being mobile with the scouts. Because he could still kill more villagers, but I think he wants to keep red open right now. Red very late to adding spearmen, though. So, so here's a deal. Now, granted, this is just one, one mid-elo game. But I've had people ask me a lot why I don't do mid-elo. 
And the reality is, is like mid elo players are good enough where they know, you know, to do certain things. But it also comes down to like, it just basically comes down to consistency and execution. And so I, I, I've i casted mid elo before and I feel like a majority of games just turn into this where it's like one player's ahead. And it, you know, that's... They're good enough to... Uh, the opponent's good enough to get a lead, but the person who's losing is not necessarily good enough to, to bring it back when you're behind, you know? It's tricky. Like, the obvious move here is just make a few more Spearmen here if you're red, right? Like, you make, like, one more Spearmen here, and this could be a really good fight for you. Now, the best build order... The best build order is Scouts into Archers in the Castle Age. So you go gold like he did, right? You then add a range, and you don't even need to make a lot of them. Like, keep your Scouts alive and have two Archers, and suddenly the Spearman moves completely countered. Let's see... Uh, Grass Doubt, I've been told, and I don't know what the extension is, but much like some people on Twitch would use extensions for certain things, there's an extension that people are using, uh, that allows you to, like, remove certain elements, like, like the live thing, if you wanted to. I don't know what it is, so, you, correct me if I'm wrong, chat. See, if, maybe a market here? A market here for red, and he can bail himself out? It's interesting to me how Red has now added a second scout, you know? That's a little late, but he'll lose his first one. Great job from Blue. He's got his walls down. He's now adding a market, which he doesn't really need. But maybe it just feels better to have a market around every now and then. And uh, he will over top of this, but he's on the way to Castle Age. Has a villager lead, has an economy lead. And efficiency and all that. And maybe it's recoverable for red? Maybe. Doesn't seem like this is going to be tricky, though. An ad blocker can block regular elements in DevTools F12 as well on desktop browser. Gotcha. Okay, cool. James says, T90, when are you going to watch one of my monk rushes? Oh, boy. Let me guess. Bohemians? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so this is this is interesting. This is, this is actually what I would consider to be a, a incorrect call, okay? So we have supplies! We have supplies coming in here for blue, okay? I believe that's because the last thing he saw was Spearman, all right? Here's something that you need to remember. Knights counter Spearman. That's right. Knights counter Spearman. So, one knight completely wrecks a Spearman. Especially Teuton Knights, because they have extra melee armor. So... You don't really need to make a full tech switch into countering Spearmen. Now, if they've got a bunch of them, and then you, you think they're going to go Pike, then yeah. But right now, like, what would be most effective for him would have been, in my opinion, to go double stable. Because then you've got a lot of night pressure, and you can push those Spearmen. And then you're in a good spot. He also has gone to stone, which is interesting to me. So I'm not really sure how this guy's going to spend his resources. He's in castle now. It's normal to get eco upgrades and make some knights, but is he going to do something else? No. Oh. oh, he wants to town center the middle. Well, maybe him going to stone is because he realizes that there's not a lot of gold long term and he wants to maybe castle the middle. I don't mind that. Um, Dario, it kind of, to answer your question on how much you need on gold for double stable knight production... It kind of depends on when you go to gold and when you start spending it, right? Like, Blue went to gold really early with four villagers. Or maybe it was three. And so now he's got 800. So it, it, it does kind of depend on when you go to gold. But in general, you want five. I would say five is the number per stable. Because knights are pretty gold heavy. So, in general, five per stable. Alright, so first thing we see from red is pikemen. Alright. Alright. So he just got supplies, he didn't do anything else. And now we have, for some reason, Blue just starts to sell food. So guys, I'm telling you right now, Red can do this, and I... Forgive me for, for talking down upon these non low elo legends. But I think Red could realistically do something here, because Blue didn't try and push home his advantage in the early castle age. Has tons of resources. Could have got upgrades on the blacksmith, could have had like 20 knights by now. 
But he's kind of focused on the eco side of things, which is not necessarily bad. But it does mean it gives Red some time to do some stuff. My stomach is growling right now. What is wrong with me? I, I even ate like a pretty, pretty big breakfast. Maybe I'm just hungry for death. You guys ever get hungry for death? That happens to me a lot. Okay, so Blue said, I'm ahead. And I'm going to get ahead, further ahead with Eco. And Red now sees this. Okay, so now you've got a target if you're Red. He's going to attack this. He should get a Vil kill. Okay, he'll get one. But now he needs to run away. The TC will be strong enough. He'll get two. Needs to run away. Can't let the TC do that. You have no armor, so you really need to get some armor if you're fighting underneath TCs. Now, it wouldn't be a bad idea for Red to shift over to taking some stone. And then again, it's just more army, guys. Like, that would be, for both players right now in Castle, the ticket for you is create more army. I swear to you. It's easier for 1050 players to get to 1200 by going one TC full army full upgrades than it is with anything else. I promise you. Uh, I don't know what ELO you have, chat. But I see so many games that around 1,000 ELO or like 1,100 where they try and go three TCs like the pros do. And if the player on the other side would just stay one TC with three stables and full upgrades, everything would die. Like this TC, dead. Right? Castle would never go up. Uh, you know, then you lose access to the gold. Hmm. No, no, no. I'm not in. I'm not in Pacific time. I'm in uh, Eastern. So it's like what one one forty five for me. I guess breakfast was a bit ago. Maybe that's why I'm hungry. Okay, so now Blue is imping. He'll have his castle free murder holes with Tootins. Um, has the Vill lead. And you, you know, from Red's point of view, obviously he fell really far behind early. And so I think the outlook if you fall behind early has got to be. Push, 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 and punish, right? Maybe like he tried and maybe determined it's too tricky. Still not really sure what Blue is going to do, but he's, he's got a big lead from here. One TC all in Knights works very well. This ELO can confirm. Yeah, it's, it's crazy strong. It's crazy strong, honestly, at a lot of ELOs. Like, it, it can work against virtually all ELOs, but it, it's situational, you know? Hmm. Um, okay, now we've got pikes. It's a pretty defensive choice here to go for some pikes for Truth Bandicoot. And sending them into the castle is pretty interesting. I think Blue's outlook is honestly just camp the gold. I think Blue is going to treat this like gold rush and just protect the golds for the rest of the game. And just say, come at me I'll, and play defense. What's stopping Red from pushing in the Blue's Eco? Uh, fear. Fear. Like, l let me talk to you guys about this. So, so Red, he just sat here, right? Just sat here. Let's say he didn't want to go back in. He's going to try now, and he's going to realize it's too late, and he's going to be frustrated. However, this is so exposed. There's palisade walls. There's houses. And even if you don't get in, you're forcing reactions from the enemy if you start attacking a house, and they have to build more. There's a reaction from Blue. A little late as the Knights get some kills. But uh, again, there's Pikemen inside the castle. You've got the TC fire and the castle fire. And Red's going to lose this army. That's still pretty good value from the Knights. But ideally, you would get in and then get out. We now see a forward TC for Red on food. Which is a little weird to me. Not sure about that one. Okay, obviously a big freak out here for Blue. He's got quite a few villagers out here. And that was a Treb in there. Guys. Blue is in him. With Pikeman, a Castle Age unit. And the Feudal Age armor upgrade. So again, to circle back to my point. All-in Knights would absolutely wreck here. I hope that there's someone who's like 900 ELO or 950 ELO or 1000 ELO watching. Like, eco's great. Eco is important. But if you just set out your, your whole focus for production and spending your res at getting full upgrades on knights, melding through buildings, I swear to you. If you don't focus on adding the TCs or getting relics or anything, just full knight aggro, you could win. It still feels winnable. 
It still feels winnable for red. If you were to just get full upgrades, make knights, and just attack. Now, I'm not sure about this. Like, this, this is tricky. But red's outlook is on aim. Red's outlook is not on spending all those resources. And that's where the problem comes in. Because it gives blue time. And then blue will eventually say, hmm, maybe I need more than one barracks. That'd be really smart. And then blue will have, like, halb and maybe some blacksmith upgrades here or there. Full knight like Viper vs. Dark. Yeah, pretty much. I started going 1 TC full aggressive instead of 3 TCs right away thanks to T90 and it worked. I'm still a low though. Yeah, it's... I think the other thing about going full aggro is that teaches you a skill that you're probably not used to, right? Most people are used to the relaxed portion of Age of Empires, but they don't know how to balance that with production. But I feel like if you focus on just 1 TC, it, it just gives you a... You know, you, you improve a little bit. Okay, so red comes in, blue reacts. It's it's pretty much a no-no at this point of the game to be fighting with knights without the final armor. And uh, here come the trebs now <laughs> for blue. Just like two random trebs <laughs> going after red's TC. But yeah, blue's got a massive vill lead. Red has resources, but will arrive to imp with no army. You've got Teutonic knights. You've got pikes, the TC goes down. Red wants more production buildings and is going to make the production buildings right underneath the treps. Which I have to say is not the wisest decision I've seen today. Obviously, red is stressed, you know, so it's it's tough for you to make the proper decisions. But uh, you saw what happened to your TC, right? Okay, red's going to scramble this down. It's just right in front of all of it. <laughs> like... This, this seems so silly to me. Not to come off too judgy here. Okay, so he gets one barracks up and then decides to bail. What's this? Oh, wow. Okay, blue wants to TC that. And there's a red militia there. That's funny. Well, Teutonic Knights are honestly one of the best units to make in a Teuton Mirror. What you would need to counter full infantry would be hand cannons. You can see red's thinking about that. So red knows... Red's trying to make archery ranges and is getting chemistry to make hand cannons. But that's the only counter in this matchup, the Teutonic Knights. Also, they have tons of free stats. So they have a lot of HP, they have a lot of attack. So if you're someone who forgets blacksmith upgrades like blue, it's a really good unit to make. Hmm. I feel like both are probably Teuton pickers, guys. I feel like both are probably Teuton pickers. Instead of just like one or the other. I feel like anyone who's ever playing Tootins in a ranked game, obviously there's that rare occurrence where it's, it's random sieve. But at low to mid elo, if someone's Tootins, odds are they probably pick Tootins a lot. Okay, Knights from Red. I like how Red's still trying to attack. Also, the Militia's getting some value over here. Great reaction from Blue, though, to kill that. Should end up going down despite all the attack. <laughs> that is a strong Militia! <laughs> That militia did get value. I said it wouldn't kill any vills. I was wrong. It killed two villagers. The drush paid off. Yeah, okay. We now have hand cannons on the way for red, who must feel like this is impossible now. Still trying, though. Still making hand cannons. I just... I don't see... Like, blue doesn't even have to take cost-effective engagements now. And blue will still win because of having all the gold in the middle. I'd like to see blue maybe make an extra mining camp or two, but yeah, I'm, I'm really struggling to see how this is winnable for red. Just too many mistakes early on, and then the opportunity to, to come back came in Castle Age, and we didn't see too much action. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. T90, can you have one of your mods look me up and check out my games? I want to improve my smush, and you want to have monks at 15 minutes. James, I would use game submissions on the Discord, man. Use game submissions. I, I don't know if my mods will, will look at it, but that's the place to put games. We have the town bell from blue. 87 idols. Ding, 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 ding. That's crazy. I mean, blue's a really solid player. To ring the town bell at this elo is wild to me. You know, with, with like 30 plus farms and all this map control, some things that are not so easy to do to see town bell be a priority too is pretty wild. Um, yeah, also, I'm not sure if you want my mods giving uh, you tips on your gameplay because 
some of my mods are not not too experienced in that regard. <laughs> not talking about anyone specifically. <clears throat> Ducks. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, Treb's rolling away. <clears throat> Shocker. <clears throat> um, you've got the hand cannons now paying off. And so for blue, you're now going full infantry into hand cannons. Hand cannon, as I said, is the unit the unit to counter what blue is making. So if you're blue and you've got this economy, you just make something else, right? <laughs> I think I think wrong. <laughs> I think blue just wants to make enough infantry where it could surround this. It's all about numbers for blue. And it might actually be possible. That's still not enough hand cannons. I think you'd need upwards of like 30 or 40. Okay. When's the correct time to use the town bell? Honestly, never. Honestly, never. Um, selecting your villagers and then garrisoning in a, that specific spot is the best way to do it. Learning that is really important. 140 vills. Blue continues to make more. Blue's just like making it so so crazy of a task for red to be able to get kills here. So you kill 10 vills, I'll create 10 more. What are you going to do? Look at those resources for Blue. Also, a lot of Trebs on the way now. Blue's at 200 pop, though. And there's the gunpowder. Okay. And we don't have any siege or anything from Red. He's also making knights. Something I think you have to continue to question. Red is just one TC, I guess, after losing the other one. Didn't make any more. And Blue sees this, and ah, that hurts. That hurts. Because red needs to deal with this then. It feels like if that castle goes down, red can definitely never push the middle. Is there a best way to have settings to select vids among military? Oh, what? Nick, did you mean instead of vids, did you mean to say vils? Oh, yeah, there is a forward TC. But this, he didn't even create anything out of this, right? Kind of just there. Look at this circle. Look at this guard. Look at this protection for the Treb. You love to see it. There's just no unit here to snipe the Trebs. Man, Bombard Cannons are such an um, underrated siege weapon for mid and low elo players. You have the gunpowder, right? So with Siege Workshops, you could have made some Bombard Cannons, and that would give you a realistic chance of taking out the Trebs and then pushing the castle here from Blue. Still, though, I mean, Blue's going to lose these Trebs most likely. I swear, if Blue throws this game, I'm going to lose my mind. It is possible because Blue's only producing out of two barracks and that one singular castle. And now we've got Trebs from Red. No way. It's so stubborn, man. It's so stubborn for Truth Bandicoot. You've got crazy resources. You can go Paladin. You can go Siege Onager. You can add Bombard Cannons. To just go infantry here just feels insane. Okay, we'll use Trebs on the enemy Trebs. That's something that Red needs to think about. The Red's going to try and get in. Actually, no ranged upgrades on the Blacksmith, so the castle doesn't have a lot of range. And one of the Trebs for Blue will go down. Unfortunately for Red, one goes down for him as well. Whoa, do these Trebs have ballistics or something? Okay, so blue holds for now. We have another Treb on the way. Like, this is your wake-up call, okay? 3,000 wood, 5,000 food, 5,000 gold. It was a time for macro. Now it's time for production buildings and units, my friend. As apparently a siege workshop is making stuff. And okay, we've got a ram... Which might be for this TC or something. I don't know. Does he see it? I've been told by chat that this is this is the sheep. Do they see it? Um, doesn't. Okay, ram and then siege. That's fine. But you've got too many vills. Okay, I think villagers have been either lost or deleted. I can't believe this is actually a game right now. And honestly, with the resources they both have, it just comes down to production buildings and unit queue. Production buildings and unit queue. This is so winnable for red. Now, what I would do again is I would probably go Paladin. Because if the opponent goes Halb, you already have... Uh, well, now you don't really have castles, but you can go Teutonic Knights. 
But I would go Paladin if I were blue, or would have gone Paladin. If you're red, your best comp is probably to go Halb Hand Cannon. But we're, we've seen a Barracks, we've seen a Stable, I don't know if Red knows. And Red, I would send at least 10 to 15 Vils in the middle and just mine that gold. Here come the Knights. Little raiding attempt from Red. I imagine for 1050 ELO, it's probably difficult to manage that as well as the hand cannons. And so those Knights go down. And you know what Blue's making, so making more stable units is, is definitely not the right choice. Whoa! What is this fighting? What? <laughs> Guys! <laughs> What's happening? What is this attacking? What is this? I've never seen anything like this before in my life. Hold on, rewind? It's attacking the air right now. Some people's children, I'll tell you. Some people's children. Hold on, I need to back up. I want to see when this started. It seems like a bug. <laughs> okay, hold on. This is funny. Okay, so there he is. All right, so this is what happens. I'm going to tell you, I, I forgot that this bug exists, okay? So unfortunately, uh, while this is a video game, occasionally real life and real life personality will seep into the video game we have here, okay? So what happens is, you know, the lead knight, his name is is uh, is Richard, okay? The lead knight is determined to go do something for his family. You know, he hasn't been out in the, on a raid in a while. So he's like, hey, let's go kill the enemy. And everyone's like, raw, we're real big and strong. Raw, we're tough. And then you've got this guy, and he's like, uh, guys, I'm pretty sure I saw Halbs out there. He's like, it doesn't matter. Richard's like, we gotta attack. And he's like, attack? I got you. And so this is him. Whoa, there's two of them. Whoa, there's two of them. What the? Okay, and these guys are like, yeah, uh, we're definitely helping. We're definitely helping. And then all these guys die, and th these knights get to keep their lives. But wait, they're following the rock terrain. This must be a bug associated with the terrain. Are they going to go around in a freaking circle till they hit the edge of the map? I've never seen that before. I don't know how to describe that. That's a funny bug right there. Okay. So. <laughs> that, that's ridiculous. Those are the types of bugs I like. Because it's just like insane, you know? <laughs> there they go. Weirdest bug I've probably seen. And again, it comes down to unit Q. And Blue's stuck at 200 pop at, because of having 50 halves, which get completely countered by gunpowder. Where, where was that point as Blue is uh, attacking a building over here? Remember that point where I said that you, you don't see comebacks at 1050 ELO? Well, apparently, I'm an idiot. Oh, by the way, this guy's actually raiding the eco now. What's funny is he's going to win that fight. And then maybe, I don't know. Okay, continue to raid. That's a smart knight. He knows when to attack and when not to attack. Blue is losing some infantry population now. And is going for a lot of rams. Like a ton of siege. Holy cow. And is going for more side attacks soon. Um, and this game just got really crazy. 120 pop for the heretic. Who I think has gone for a really crazy push, but also Blue spent so much of this game with 150 villagers that Blue's got resources like crazy. But has 76 idle villagers because of the town bell. Ding 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 ding. So now you've got villagers in this part of the screen just not working. Okay, this is gonna get dealt with in the middle. Actually, no, I think Blue will Blue will send more units and clear that out. Red is distracted. These attacks have worked. Red also only has one trap. Why are we? Okay, listen. I again, we went into this wanting to coach a bit more. Okay, so this is the this is the angry coach. Why, when the opponent's making halbs, okay, um, are we making scouts with a civilization that doesn't get light cap? Now, to be fair, Teutons do get full blacksmith upgrades on their horses. Okay, but of all things to see producing right now. Scouts is not the thing that I really want to see. I think from Red's point of view, Red is just like, uh, we want to raid Blue, and I want a raiding unit, so that's why we're seeing Scouts. But what I really like to see, now that the opponent's got full halves, because remember, the opponent doesn't have gunpowder, is use this castle and make some Teutonic Knights. That would be the play. 
Teutonic Knights are bad against Gunpowder. They're great against pretty much everything else, especially against Halbs. That is what Red needs, is Teutonic Knights in the middle. We'll see if Red picks up on that. Also, this is a scout for the people wondering. And this knight got stuck on the edge of the map. I apologize for getting uh, distracted. Okay, so Red says, well, looks as though I can't take the gold anymore. So I'm going to buy stone and I'm going to drop a castle and drop it right here, Red. Oh, yeah, yeah. Drop it, drop it right into the eco. Blue won't know what to do. Oh, that's such a great castle. And meanwhile, Blue says, forget about our people. Forget about our base. We're going to ram into Red's base, which might actually work. I don't even know. Onager's on the way. Red sees this. Red shoots down the mangonel. Beastly play. <laughs> Blue just says, forget about our people, basically. <laughs> No, I do like the idea of uh, attacking the opponent. Like, that's that's one way to get them off your back. I preach that a lot. One way to get them away from your base is to attack theirs. But I'm not sure if fully abandoning focus on your base is necessarily the move. But, uh, hey, Blue still has plenty of resources. And now, now Blue says, now that the production of Siege is off the charts, let's push. I still would have liked to see Bombard Cannons, like... Not having Siege Rim really hurts Teutons, but Blue's fine. Blue's fine. Uh, this this will work, right? It's, it's getting a lot of uh, damage in, a lot of distraction. Blue's protecting the middle. Red just had one single trip, which uh, you'd think is going to go down, but now the scouts show up for Red. Blue, please take out the trip. Blue, please take out the trip. The trip, please. Oh my god, the scouts are actually working. What is wrong with me? No, the trip. Blue, take out the trap. It's on 5 HP. The trap, Blue. Blue, you need the pop space right now. The trap. The trap, Blue. The trap. Guys, Blue is about to lose the castle. Meanwhile, we've got Cavalier running in. We've got Scouts running in. This is the most ridiculous game. Blue also get pop capped, so all the units that are now in queue will not be able to come out. But then Villagers will die, so then maybe they will be able to come out. It's the side base from Blue. It's a side base, and I bet you that gather point is just set right into Red's eco. And Red doesn't have help. So what Red really needs right now is Blue decides that now is a great time for Paladin. Is Red really needs for this push to work. If this push dies, I think it's over for Red because the rest of his eco is going down. But holy cow, man. Holy cow. Great job from Blue. Uh, the Rams were a little, a little weird. The Cavalier raids, I love. I think that's a really good move. But also, Blue now has zero on food and zero on gold. So if this doesn't work, this could be disastrous. I want to say Blue's going to win this game, but Blue has 40 villagers that are idle. And Blue's about to lose like 30 or 40 bills as well. Um, yeah, we do have Blue sending more villagers over this way. Probably to take that stone, that would be my guess. Also just has so many Cavalier in queue. And then for Red... Red is only making scouts. Red is not spending the gold at all. No, no hand cannons. Not seeing any, like, halbs coming out. But I have to say, my hats go off. My hat goes off to both players here because this has been an immensely entertaining game. Way more entertaining than I thought after the early game. I do think that Truth Bandicoot was kind of playing with fire. Uh, not spending the resources fast enough. But it must feel good. To almost throw the game and then bring it back with these raids as Paladin's now in. With no blacksmith upgrades! Oh my god, no blacksmith upgrades! That's a really important detail here. Wow, well the Trebs have gone down for red, so there's no way for red to push. And now red's gonna make pikemen that will have blacksmith upgrades. And But you know, it's a little casual, right? You've just got one barracks coming up. We have Teutonic Knights from the forward castle. But no Teutonic Knights from the defensive castle. Choo-choo! Finally, the Rams show up. Red's got an archer in that TC, by the way, which is kind of funny. And yeah, I think... I think... Granted, Red might continue to fight if Red can still push. I think this is over. But wait a second, Red. Don't resign, please. Please don't resign. You have the knight, Okay. But no, that's not the reason. I think Red could lose all of his eco. But I think Red could actually trep and push all of Blue's eco. 
Like, I feel like there's a chance that both players will lose all their buildings. Blue doesn't have any villagers over here. Blue's villagers here will end up being important, but like... Okay, Teutonic Knights needing to save the day with some pikemen. I'm telling you, as we see a barracks here for red, if red could just get the trebs onto the TCs here, all of these villagers die. That's all of blue's economy except for these vills who are currently on a hiatus. Pikemen and Teutonic Knights clearing things up. Rams are not going to be enough here. Oh my goodness. Come on, red. Come on, Red, you can do this. This seems ridiculous that this is winnable. The buildings are going down. Oh my god. What's happening? What's happening? We have a panic market, people. A panic market. It's just, will Red have the confidence to look forward right now? Probably not. Red's worried about this. But Teutons and Teutonic Knights, and I'm telling you, Red, make more of them. Make more Teutonic Knights. Don't don't trickle them in yet. Keep massing, keep massing, keep massing. They're doing the job. Remember, Blue is out of food right now. Red has an army in the middle that he's completely forgotten about. Red could take the gold. And here comes, okay, the hand cannons. This is what I'm talking about. Unless there's a siege workshop here, which there's not for Blue, I don't see how these hand cannons get dealt with. So we now have the Halb upgrade. Again, like... If, if, this, if these resources are spent, I think it's possible that Blue loses everything. I think it's very possible that Blue loses everything. Okay, now... <laughs> I guess this is the next logical move. You just bring your Vils over here to TC. Because you think you're going to lose this corner now. And, okay, this, this looks like it's unimportant. But this stone is actually huge. Because what Blue really needs is a castle. And Red's now going to TC here. They're town centering each other's bases right now. But how does Blue catch up in military? I think Red has completely forgotten about this military. That's such a big deal. So Blue cleared that up. Red maybe scared now. Like Red really needs to realize that this army's here. Okay, so we have... Oh, okay, there we go. Truth Bandicoot is now buying food. Buying food and making houses, hopefully, somewhere, please. Okay, now we'll just have a castle. You want to castle my base? I'll castle your base. How does it feel? How does it feel? Come on, Red. You know, these games, they, they, get, in your, they get in your head. And there's no order of things anymore. So he's try Red's trying to create more vills, which is fine, but like... I guess the game sense isn't there to realize that you gotta push here. Okay, Blue is now abandoning this TC, I think. But it's funny, Blue's actually making units but doesn't have pop space right now. So when this castle goes up, Blue will then have pop space to be able to take out that treb. So it feels like it's possible that this could be kept up. See what I mean? Now he's got pop because some units died. Um, okay. Vils are... <laughs> Oh, this is Age of Empires. This is amazing. This is this is beautiful game. I think Red now... Maybe Red was intentionally keeping the army there, by the way, to keep uh, Blue off of gold. <laughs> it looks like we have... It looks like we have Truth Bandicoot in chat. Says, I don't know why I built that castle, to be honest. I was just mad at him. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. And wow, the TC stays up here for Blue, like I said. Please no spoilers, by the way. I've seen you in chat for the last couple minutes. This is a great game. Just please don't spoil who wins or loses this. This still feels like it could go either way, right? I mean, the, the structure of the game is gone. Neither player is on gold. Neither player has relics. The KD is fairly even. Um, uh, you've got scouts killing house villagers. But I, Oh, God. This, this is the end. This is the end, I think. If this castle goes down, it is the end. Red just completely fell flat with the army movement. Like, with the army, could have defended the castles. Or the castle. And I think this is now fine for blue. Like, the T90 fine. You know, the... The meme with the uh, little dog in the house that's on fire. 
at level fine. You have boars being brought in one hour and 11 minutes. We still have zero upgrade paladin being produced. Which is, which is costly. Okay, red. Not really sure where to focus now. Red has the score lead though, which is so crazy to me. But red probably has the score lead because of tech, because of all the techs and because of the ki the uh, kills. Okay, Ruth Bandicoot, selling res still. I like how you've just got random elephants being eaten everywhere. Scouts everywhere. And where do you even where do you even look to right now if you're red? Hey, that that's red's issue. I guess red knows there's eco here. And here come some halbs, and here come the hand cannons. Red doesn't have the treb, though, and red needs to make houses, which red is now doing. Sometimes you need a little bit of a mental reset. You know, there's no pauses. I guess technically you could pause, but you just need to... You just need to breathe, you know? Breathe a little bit. Um, and that's something that, that both players could benefit from here. You're seeing the paladins, even without the blacksmith upgrade, still have such good stats. With so much HP compared to a hand cannon. They clear that. And now you have red down to 60 pop. And the biggest issue is that six of that is villagers. So what red needs to do is work with what they've got right now. Meanwhile, blue, I think, needs the gold. I think it would actually be a great time for blue to castle the gold. With this stone, you know, now you can make another castle. Um... Also, a great time for blacksmith upgrades. Wow. I I'd never thought that we would see that. Um, Where was the blacksmith at? Does anyone see it? Oh, there it is. Okay. So we got one upgrade. Woo-wee! One upgrade on Cav. That's something. And these villagers are going to go over and maybe make a lumber camp. Paladins are still camping the gold. You've got some halves from red kind of chasing over here. Red is producing vills. I know you guys are like, what? what is Red doing right now? But he's he's creating vills. And he's, try, he's trying to get his army production up. Let's see, TC's got... TC could go down to hand cannons, but I don't think you want to lose any hand cannons at this point. A little bit of a reboom here. Good decision. And, uh, you know, Blue losing those units there to the barracks. Let's see if this is maybe possible for Red. Who still feels like he's got... He's just got a stronger army, right? I think both players are allergic to gold at this point. <laughs> now, that's not true, Gust Out. Red has made a lot of houses, so he could make more army. He's making halps, right? Uh, he's making halps. And he's also creating villagers. So, Red has had to... I mean, he had like six vills. He's at 14 now. So it's, it's not true that Red has been doing nothing. It, it feels like it because he went down the six vills, but he's doing just as much as Blue, I would say. If not more, actually. If not more. I think Blue has this habit of right-clicking the opponent's buildings, which is a really bad habit to get into because they know you're there. And as you can see, the siege is going to go down. The vills have to run to the castle. Blue's got a treb in there. We'll see if Red runs into the castle or not. With his military? Well, he doesn't have siege. He can't afford siege. I still think he's done a fine job. I still think he's done a fine job. He had his scouts go over here a second ago, I think. Now they're in the middle. Obviously, he'll lose the helps because he, he was trying to do so much. I mean, I'm looking at Blue's economy. Actually, can I look at what the resources collected in this game are so far? Okay, as I expected. Blue brought in so much more, but Blue doesn't have so much more in the bank. Blue has been very wasteful in this game. And has almost thrown it. I, I genuinely thought Blue was just sitting back and was just like, well, we won this game and was kind of trolling. But it's just 150 vills with only a couple production buildings and things got out of hand fast. Okay. TC over here. Good eco expansion, I guess. I mean, now you've got farms, which is nice. And then a TC in the middle. Yeah, this is something Red needs to stop. But Red will have uh, one Treb. 
This is a ridiculous game. Obviously, with very little gold income, it's hard to come by trebs right now for both players. So there's a treb for blue, and there's a treb for red, and they're going to treb off. Probably towards the center. I think when red sees this, then that'll happen. Here come the scouts. Now, there's a good chance blue doesn't notice this. Because now blue's over here, expanding with buildings. If the scouts start to attack, I could see blue losing all these bills. See, yep, blue's probably looking towards the middle, or looking over here. And we do have the reaction. Okay. Not bad, not bad, not bad. The scouts are going to move along from red. They have officially swapped sides, FYI, if we've not established that. Okay, now red about to go to gold in the middle sees that there's a TC there and obviously has the trap. Villagers over here are going to go down. Blue is creating vills. That's something blue's really good at, is creating vills. But, like, I think selects all the TCs to do so, which is not a bad habit. But you can see, forgot about the gather point. So it's kind of wasting food. Sending villagers off to the edge of the map. And I think Blue is now bailing on the idea of taking res in the middle. And is adding another TC. Oh god, are you going to boom to 150 vills again? Meanwhile, the scouts... Uh, this is wasteful from Red. I think the scouts have been a huge help. It's funny that, you know, both players have kind of forgotten Tootins get free murder holes in this game. But anyways, Red's like, don't mind if I do. I'll take that gold now. Thank you very much. And Red on one TC... Has boomed up decently, but now Blue comes in with the scouts, and Blue's gonna take out the Treb. Or not, actually, take out the Treb. Hmm. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Okay, now we're starting to see Blue solve a problem that has existed for a bit, and that's army production. Uh, with the quad barracks here, there's gonna be more army production. However, the hand cannons still are gonna rock the halps. Now, what's making me feel like Blue's going to win this more and more is the 37 on food. A little deceiving, because you've got... Okay, I take it all back, actually, because that's, like, going to disappear in a bit. But still, at least you have 37 on food. At least that gives you some food income. I was thinking that was 37 farms, but I was, I was incorrect. As we now are going to have a castle here for Blue, I'd prefer the castle be a little closer to the gold, but I like that Blue's focusing on that. And now here comes Red, and Red's, I think, going to go for this castle. Which is so funny, because it doesn't protect anything right now. <laughs> it's not about what it protects, it's about sending a message, right? And meanwhile, the villagers are exposed, but, but Blue's thinking like, oh my god, he's camping the gold. So I'm curious to see when Blue will figure out that the middle's exposed now. Okay. Zero on wood right now for red. Zero on wood. I think that needs to be solved because you will need more helps. But the golden come is there. This is amazing. I I'm really curious on what the game sense is going to be for both now. Okay. So we're going to hear that burr burr on blue's side. The blue's thing. I need to take an engagement here. I feel like with maybe five to ten more paladins... I like this, but again, no upgrades. But wait, Blue's going to say, wait, that means he's not in the middle, right? This is a sick play. This is a great game sense. Very good game sense to understand the situation. I'm loving that. And also realizing I'm going to lose the castle, so let's make more houses. That's good, that's good, that's good. I'm over here. Two Teutonic Knights cleared out a bunch of scouts. We also have a monk going for the relic. That will be denied. Unfortunate for red. As red is back down to 16 vills. I think... I could be wrong, but I think Truth Bandicoot uses the Select All TC hotkey to create vills. And I think that's something that all players should get into the habit of doing. Especially in the messy games. Okay, I'm just going to take some elephants over here. Really good job with farms, honestly. The, the eco expansion has been really impressive for blue. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Uh, especially since Truth Bandicoot is listening. You, you got, like, your eco's phenomenal, right? But, like, you, you gotta go in for the killer blow at some point here. I think we're about to see it. Like, we've got, I always talk about having four trebs instead of one or two. And this might be that killer blow. This might be it. Remember, there was a point in this game where I thought the game was over. I was like, yeah, Blue's got this one. 
Then Blue had 150 vils and lacked production buildings and lacked defense at home and it got messy. Still lacks blacksmith upgrades. But we have the attack with the Paladinos. And they go in and, and fortunately, I mean, there's enough to keep the Trebs protected. It's still very, very tough to look at. Um, but I think the castle will end up falling. So both players will lose a castle. Now it's possible Blue will lose all of this eco. Because Blue is, of course, distracted here. But Red's eco, like, this is it. Red has not spread out. And that's going to be the difference maker here, I think. Now, this army that Red has, Red could conceivably just run around the map with this army and kill everything. So I hope that Red doesn't call it. But I do think Red has reached a point where this army needs to come home. Right? Like, you can leave a little bit to kill these villagers. But I think this is so bad for Red that Red actually has to come home to stop this. And I'm wondering if Red will do that. Of course, in the meantime, Blue is going to have a lot of eco over here. Uh, protected. And can now take gold over here, which is important. And, and could take the middle, too. Right? Take the middle as well. Of course, Red freaking out at home. Garrisons. Send some scouts over, maybe to snipe the Trebs. Makes me sad to see a TC doing this much to Paladins. I'll say that much. Okay, Red sending the Halbs over. Ooh, this feels like a big moment. This feels like a really big moment. The Halbs could actually deal with all of this. The hand cannons, of course, won't be touched. Um. Okay, here come the Halbs. Red now needs houses and is adding them. And we now finally have the Castle Age armor coming in for the Paladins. And Blue is going to lose. Ah! It's painful! Oh god, and if the Halbs come this way, they will also win this fight. But Blue's like, I don't care. Efficiency is not the name of the game for me. I'm just gonna raid. So, these villagers don't have a home anymore. They're now being slapped by scouts. It's, it kind of seems like a slap. I think technically they've got a weapon. But they're getting kind of boinked a little bit. Um, hand cannons are now on the way. Like, that's a, like, Red has really struggled to know where Blue is. Like, Red will take one area, and then Blue will be in two or three others. Okay. Yeah, on the bright side for Red, there's now castles. So, like, if you're up against just Halb, you can make uh, Teutonic Knights. And two Teutonic Knights will kill, like, 20 Halbs. Until the hand cannons show up. Where's the Treb for Red? He forgotten it where does anyone know oh there it is okay it's just gonna make a new tc <laughs> and you remember what i mentioned about the lack of farming eco for blue right the food count was deceiving blue will need more farms and that's not easy to do and now it's almost a spot where like blue knows the only area where red is is here but blue doesn't feel comfortable enough to take any fights there this is insane, man. This is insane. Insane in the membrane, which is, I think, a very old person thing to say, but whatever. And Truth Bandicoot calls it! With more pops, his long game 11 GG. No, 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 no. Don't call it. Red's like, okay, we're going to say GG, and we're going to hope that they mean that. Uh. Uh. Wait, Truth Bandicoot might be like, I'm not sure I'm dead yet. No! <laughs> oh, it's so hard when you see that score. It's so hard to know the situation in the game. But Red wins it. Red actually wins it. What a ridiculous game. I think so many lessons have been learned. So many things to do differently. So many things to do more of or less of. But that, that, my friends, was a bit of a shocker to me. We, we had, um, you know, you look at the total resources collected here, and it, it's pretty wild. We had 48,000 wood collected, 35,000 food collected, 19,000 gold collected, and then 4,000 stone collected. Look at the KD. Obviously, Red had the better in the engagements. You can also see Red had more blacksmith upgrades. Sorry, I know this is maybe a bit confusing. But... I mean, both players just put up such fights. Like, there was a complete base trade. You had castles everywhere. It was stress and stress and stress and stress.
And um, yeah. 56 kills go to this group of hand cannons, which might not seem like a lot, right? That might not seem like a lot of kills, but the Halbs have 51 kills. So this whole army, 107 total kills, yeah. just this army, and it's just got so much value time and time again. Oh, man. Now, in Blue's perspective, like, it's really hard to have game sense when you're 1050 ELO, right? But it's also really tough to have game sense and know the situation right now. I think what happened was Blue's like, anything I try against that, I, I lose. I don't have any map control over here. And it just, I think it felt like a matter of time for Blue that Red was going to come push and kill this. And to be honest with you, we might have just been a couple seconds away from that. We might have been a couple seconds away from that. I think that what could have really helped Blue was maybe um, maybe a Siege Workshop, maybe a Manganel. Uh, or not Manganel, yeah. Actually, Onager was, was in, right? So Siege could have helped with those resources, but... I kind of wish that would have gone on for another minute just to see if Red would have had a convincing push here. But you just gotta know, Red just has lost his mind winning that game. Like, I can, I can hear... Oh, wait, do you hear it? That's the sound of a keyboard... Where someone's typing and, and and posting on the subreddit about how I need to cast that game. Like, this is the story of the Tootin Mirror on Wade. They're writing up a whole paragraph right now. Anyways, GG. Um, again, it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I was I was impressed with Heretic Prophet's fight. I said, I think, in Feudal Age that I thought that Heretic Prophet would call the GG. Uh, that did not end up happening. So, you could see, like, clearly Red was behind in Eco most of that game but was real stubborn, was a little more mobile, I guess, with armies, and, uh, you know, got to those hand cannons, which brought it back. That's the one unit, man. It's the one unit in a toot and mirror. It's really tough to stop unless the siege comes out or unless the paladins are upgraded. And for poor Blue, resources were spent and resources were wasted on some of those paladins. G-G.